will be my magnificent obsession. To know my God. And then from that will flow out the work of God and the ministry of God in your life. I want to say something to end up. And what I'm going to say may seem a little bit too Martin Lloyd, Lloyd Jonesy for many of you. I have a great respect for Martin Lloyd Jones and his pursuit of God. I don't agree with everything he's ever said, but his pursuit and passion for God. Young men, listen to me. We are so afraid today of certain heresies that we oftentimes run in the opposite direction and create an opposite polar heresy. Much of Baptist doctrine at times have been formed around studying the heresies of others and then do everything in our power to avoid it. And by doing that, we've neutered our own Christianity. Our lives are not to be based upon experience. To be based and founded upon the Word of God and sound teaching. So I applaud your desire to know the reformed truth and the great doctrines of the faith and the great men of God throughout history that have defined them and proclaimed them. I applaud that. But you need more than that. It's not quite something I can put my finger on. But I do pray this. That God creates such a hunger in you that you seek after Him in prayer. That you desire and long for intimate communion with Him. That you desire to see His glory. That you know that in all your knowing it is not enough and you seek His power. We talk about Whitfield. We talk about Wesley. We talk about the great revivals. But to be honest with you, we wouldn't let most of those men in our churches today because they weren't quite respectable enough. And they were not very civilized in a sense. And strange things happened around them that we would not have all approved. What am I saying? I'm saying this. Do not let your inheritance be stolen from you by a bunch of heretical TV preachers who speak about things they do not know and blaspheme God in return. Know this, that there is a God and He is more than a doctrine. He is a person. There is a Holy Spirit who manifests the persons of the Father and the Son to the believer. There is a knowing God in prayer. There is the manifestation of the power of God in your life. There is the miraculous. God still does sweep through a congregation and lay them all on the floor. Not giggling or barking like dogs, but crying out for mercy because they've seen their sin. God still moves. And we should not only desire it, We should expect it. We should not be pleased when we've preached a good sermon. If you are going to the mission field, if you are going to stand in a pulpit, you are not a life coach, you are not a Peace Corps worker. And you are not just a transferer of truth. You are a prophet or you are nothing. And every time you stand before men, you must stand before men as Ezekiel stood in that valley. Knowing that unless the Spirit of God moves upon dead men, nothing will happen. And you must be a man and even a woman sent from God. I must leave him and come to you. I must leave you in a few minutes and go back to him. Or I'm nothing but a boy, a parrot, 
who talks about what other men have experienced. This is a supernatural thing, this Christianity of ours. Missions is an absolutely impossible work that demands, requires the power and the life of the Holy Spirit. And we, like many of the men we honor who went before us, should make it our constant prayer to cry out for greater and greater manifestations of the Spirit's power in our life and preaching. Do not be afraid of that which has been given to you and is your inheritance simply because others have distorted and twisted it. Seek the Lord. Seek to grow in your knowledge of Him. Cry out for a greater sense of His presence in your life. And do this one thing, but be prayed up before you do it. Cry out, O oh God, make me like your Son. And realize this, that if you had any idea what you were praying, you would not have the courage to pray it. Because to ask Him to make you like His Son will bring, about, will bring about a life of being broken by Him. Him grinding you and breaking you and disciplining you until He's formed in you the very thing He desires. Now I am so glad that my preaching professor isn't here tonight because I would have gotten an F. But what I have told you is true. You have no more ability to do missions than a dead man does to live or a donkey recite the Westminster Confession. You must have Him. You must be filled with Him. And I'll leave you to that. Let's pray. Father, You are a wonderful God. You are a merciful God. You are a very delightful God. Your mercies are new every morning. Oh, Lord. Your kindness to us has been immense. Father. Please take all this that has been said and do something with it. Convince us of our great need of you. Oh God, don't let my inability be a stumbling block. Are you not the God who speaks through rocks and donkeys? Work in the heart of this people that they would seek thee, O oh God, for love's sake, for your sake. The midnight watch would be dear. That the coming of the sun in the morning to awaken us would be dear. That brief encounters throughout the day with you would be dear.